guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to give you another tips video on how to get long healthy hair. So for me on my journey I wanted long hair right I wanted my curls to be way down to my back and it's only until lately that I've realized that my hair is not going to be way down into my back in its curly state because I'm finding that as my hair gets healthier my hair grows this way instead of lengthways. Obviously when it's straight you can see the length but in its curly state it just gets bigger and bigger right so for me i had a little bit of false hope hoping that my hair will get all the way down to my back which i'm really gonna do like so but anyways so i say don't really aim for length aim for health because obviously healthy hair will grow so let's get straight into the tips right so my first tip is to reduce heat drastically in the beginning of my journey i did used to wear my hair straight a lot more than i do right now i definitely went more of the year wearing my hair straight than curly and it was difficult for me because I was so used to having my hair straight all the time so I had to get used to loving my curls and I didn't really have anyone around me who was going through the same phase no one was really wearing their natural hair around those times so I didn't really have anyone to like you know brush shoulders with like talk about hair care and hair products and all that stuff so I was more swaying towards having my hair straight all the time and so what I tried to do was to go the whole summer without straightening my hair um, it was tough in the beginning but year after year after year it was more easy so if you are trying to cut down heat I would say try it in the summer where the silk presses are not really going to last and for me I still straighten my hair I'll say about three or four times a year and I don't get any heat damage because I allow my hair to repair between each time I straighten my hair and I only really straighten my hair to trim it anyway so yeah just try and reduce the heat as much as you can and that includes sitting under the dryer as well I think because heat is heat and even though it's not as hot as a straightener I still think that you know the blow dry or the dryer I still think that will have the potential to dry out your hair so yeah try and limit the heat as much as you can and if you are going to blow dry blow on the lowest setting possible I noticed a big change in my hair when I reduced the heat more and more my curls started to coil up more whereas before my hair was a lot more looser a lot more frizzy and yeah the curls just had time to just recuperate and you know be better <laughs> And if you are like me and you like to wear your hair straight sometimes, don't be putting it up on the highest level of heat on your straightener. Um, and if you do have a straightener that has a fixed heat, I'll suggest you to buy one that you can actually adjust the temperature. And yes, I know if you don't use that high heat, you're not going to get the silkiest results possible, but you will be saving your hair and you will still be able to wear your hair straight and curly instead of having heat trained hair or heat damaged hair and your curls are not going to pop. You know and also if you are going to straighten your hair make sure you are deep conditioning regularly as well because your hair will need time to repair after you applied all that heat on it so that takes me on to my next step which is to deep condition weekly i know wash day alone is daunting and the thought of sitting down for half an hour extra to deep condition it's a lot i know but you gotta make sure that you're deep conditioned every week because that deep conditioner is gonna put the moisture back into the hair and it's gonna rebuild your hair, especially if you're using the protein deep conditioner as well. That's gonna help rebuild the bonds in your hair, making your hair stronger, making your hair more coily, more shiny. It also increases the elasticity of your hair, which makes it less prone to breakage. Because even if you're not really doing much to damage your hair, even by styling your hair or even brushing your hair that causes strain and tension which is going to break the bonds in your hair which weakens the strands and then resultantly breaks off so you want to make sure that you are deep conditioning every week maybe not weekly but every time you wash your hair make sure you use a deep conditioner but i would recommend to wash your hair every seven to ten days i wouldn't leave it any longer than ten days because your hair needs that wash especially your scalp because your scalp is going to be the foundation for that healthy hair growth you know what i mean so yes deep condition every week replenish that moisture repair those bonds and you're just going to set your hair up for this healthy hair growth that you're looking for the next tip is to trim your hair at least three times a year so i would say four times which is every three months but 
I can't give you a tip if I don't follow it myself. I like to trim my hair in springtime, but throughout the summer, I don't trim my hair because I don't like to blow dry or straighten my hair in the summer because it's pointless. So I don't trim my hair throughout the summer at all. And then when my birthday comes around, that's when I will straighten and trim my hair, which is September, so autumn times. And then the next time I straighten and trim my hair is for Christmas, usually anyway. I didn't do that last year because I was unwell. Um, but I do like to trim and straighten my hair for Christmas, have my hair straight for Christmas. And then after that, it's springtime, which will be March. So the end of March is when I'm going to trim and straighten my hair. The reason why trimming your hair is so important is because when you have split ends, they can actually travel all the way up to the roots, which results in weak and damaged hair. And you won't even know that your, your split ends have traveled so far up because it just looks like normal hair. So you yeah, just gotta be aware of that because you won't actually know it's happened until it's too late. And the hair is just brittle, it's easy to break off and it just looks dry and damaged. I'm sure you've seen pictures yourself of someone who has lots of split ends at the bottom of their hair. The ends just look all raggedy and dry and it's even like a lighter color to the hair that's on top. So just be on the lookout for that. When my hair is straight and I'm ready to trim it, I trim where I don't see any gap and I don't see any you know, stray hairs coming away from the strands. So yeah, I like to give my hair a good, good trim every time I trim it because three months is a long time if you really do think about it. And when your hair, when your hair curling like this, you can get single strand knots as well. And the single strand knots, they're not good because they can result in breakage as well. So you get a knot. I'm sure all of you know what a single strand knot is. The single strand knots can break off where the knot is. It can also cause tension in the comb when you're combing your hair. You know, sometimes it can snag and then it can break your hair. And if your hair breaks in that way, it can also cause split ends as well. So single strand knots are my worst enemy. <laughs> they are my worst enemy. I do actually have quite a lot at the moment. I personally don't know how to prevent single strand knots. I feel like it's an inevitable when you do have curly hair. So yeah, I just make sure that I trim my hair and that has been solving my problem with my single strand knots. I don't see any breakage or extra breakage happening. So as I said, I like to trim a fair amount off my hair. I'll say about one inch or two inches every time I cut my hair, depending obviously if I need it or not. So I'll just judge on what I need and then I'll just cut. I'm not too worried about how much I cut off because I know that I take good care of my hair and I know that since I am taking good care, I know my hair is going to grow. So I don't worry about the amount. I just cut what needs to be cut. My next tip is to shampoo your roots every week. I know there's a lot of talk about not using shampoo to wash your hair. Like, since when do people not use shampoo to wash their hair? I mean, I know that co-wash has been a thing and people swear by it. That's not a problem at all. But there's some people out there who actually believe that shampooing their hair is going to make their hair dry and literally shampoo doesn't touch their hair like what <laughs> shampoo your roots if anything because your roots is where the hair is coming from right so it needs a healthy and clean environment for it to grow healthy just imagine all these products that we use it touches our scalp it gets on our scalp and over time anyway we develop a natural sebum on our scalp so it does create itchiness and sometimes dandruff dry scalp all of that because of the sebum and also if you apply oils to your scalp as well that's an added product that's on your scalp you need to make sure that you're cleaning your scalp every week so i suggest you use clarifying shampoo i would totally avoid any of those harsh shampoos like you know the, the ones you can buy in sainsbury's from <laughs> hair section not the black girl hair section this avoids any harsh shampoos at all you can look, even look in the back of your products and the ingredients list to see if there's any like those harsh sulfates in it i have used shampoos with sulfates in it even in the black hair products there are some sulfates in those shampoos but what i'm realizing is that some shampoo some of those shampoos are not even that bad so even if i do see sulfates in the shampoo i will try it out just to see how it goes so you really just gotta try out different products i know nobody wants to have like so many products just sitting there you just gotta try out what's out there but you do want the shampoo to be clarifying the moisturizing shampoos are not going to give you that clean that you're looking for to strip your hair of the excess products and or build up and everything that you've been putting on your hair um the previous week so you want something that's going to strip the oils and all the butters but not strip your natural oils so what i like to do is i shampoo my roots first the clarifying shampoo and then i'll stroke it down a little bit to my ends wash that out and then i'll 
rinse and repeat. Usually I would go in with a moisturizing shampoo the second with the second wash and take it all the way down to my strands as well, all the way down to the ends and wash that out. So I like to shampoo twice, one clarifying and one moisturizing, clarifying on the roots and moisturizing on the strands. So your scalp needs to be clean to provide that healthy environment for hair growth. If you think about it, after a week, you've got lots of product buildup, you've got bacteria, which can lead to block pores, which, which could lead to hair loss even. So as I said, and as I'm gonna keep saying throughout the whole video probably, <laughs> is the hair needs a clean environment to grow so yeah shampoo your roots guys <laughs> so the next tip i'm going to give you guys is to use a leave-in conditioner so with the leave-in conditioner you need something that's going to be kept on your hair after you wash it so you deep condition it all you know you condition it with your normal conditioner in the shower but you need to add the leave-in conditioner to maintain the health of the hair and also the leave-in conditioners help to aid moisture retention as well so you've cleaned your hair your hair's nice and squeaky clean the next thing you want to put in it is a leave-in conditioner something that's going to penetrate the strands and get deep into the strands to further condition them and also the leave-in conditioner is going to help to give the hair slip which helps with styling as well one thing that I used to do was to leave a little bit of the conditioner when I was washing my hair in my hair. And that's because leave-in conditioners and conditioners, they have similar ingredients. So you could actually use a conditioner as a leave-in as well, depending on what one you use as well. Because I know some have like isopropyl alcohol and all these other stupid ingredients in it. So again, you need to check your ingredients list to see if you know you see any bad ingredients because you don't want to be putting anything on your hair that's got isopropyl alcohol because that's just going to dry your hair but i must say the herbal essences hello hydration conditioner that i use it has isopropyl alcohol in it i literally was going to stop using it but um i just thought you know i've been using this one since i was a teenager and it's not done anything bad to my hair so i mean <laughs> if it works it works in it but i would say from here on out <laughs> if i see isopropyl alcohol in any of my products i'm not going to use it especially if it's my leave-in conditioner or my conditioner or even like my deep conditioner why would i want something that's drying to be in something that's supposed to be putting moisture in my hair you know what i mean but anyway next tip <laughs> The next tip I'm going to give you is to re-moisturize and seal your ends with an oil. Right, so I know some people don't like to use oil in their hair. Okay, but with me, I like to use my oil when I'm styling my hair. And I also like to use it midweek when I'm restyling my hair. And even if I'm not restyling my hair, I still like to add a little bit of oil. Even with my straight hair, I still like to add oil. Because the ends need to be sealed from time to time. For me, my kind of cut off day where my hair starts to get a little bit too dry is the fourth day so the fourth day or the fifth day i'll go in with my oil and seal my ends so if i'm restyling i restyle it with like my water my leave-in my gel whatever i'm using but i make sure to seal my ends with the oil so the oil i like to use is my own personal mixture um i do have a video i haven't edited it <laughs> the ends of your hair are the oldest part obviously so you'll find it will dry up more quickly than the rest of your hair and also by sealing the ends you'll prevent split ends from occurring as well i think it's crazy that people don't use oil for that purpose alone to seal your ends and don't you find that the oil actually helps with styling as well like it helps the hairs glide past each other i've tried to not use oils in my hair before and my hair wasn't as easy to manage if you know what i mean like i wasn't having that you know like they they're not gliding past each other they're kind of rubbing against each other so yeah i think there is a place for oil i like to use it in my wash days my deep conditioner sometimes when i'm styling midweek and my pre period routine so yes moisturize and seal your ends the next tips are to take a supplements drink water and to maintain a healthy diet as healthy as possible <laughs> personally i don't like the idea of taking a pill just for my hair skin and nails so I just maintain my, my daily supplementation. So I'll say multivitamin, cod liver oil or omega-3, calcium, magnesium. You can actually take collagen as well, which is good for the skin and hair. Zinc, vitamin C, all of those things will help with your immune system and, and everything as well. If you're just taking a multivitamin, for instance, you can check on the back of your bottle to see what's not meeting the 100% recommend, recommended daily allowance. So that's what I did basically. I just went and bought whatever 
I felt was missing from my multivitamin and also research what vitamins and minerals I would need for my personal diet. So yeah, those are the vitamins I take. Um, with water, I drink at least two litres a day. I don't quite hit two litres every day, but I do aim to have two litres. You can drink more if you want, three litres, a pint, do what you can, but make sure it's at least two litres of water. Water is just good for everything, isn't it? It's good for your hair, good for your skin, good for your overall health. As you know, our bodies are made with a lot of water, so water is needed to replenish every part of our body. Healthy eating. I mean, just making sure that you're getting your five portions of fruit or veg a day. Eating good amounts of protein and grains and having a balanced diet. I mean, I like my sweet treats. I like my ice cream. I like all of that good stuff. But everything in moderation, you know? Even with fruit and veg, everything in moderation. You want to change out what you're eating every now and then. So next tip is to wear protective styles. And I mean, I don't really wear protective styles. But I would recommend to wear protective styles when the climate is at its worst. So in the peak of summer or at the peak of winter, you want to protect your hair from those really harsh weathers. I think probably like next week or the week after, I might do a protective style. I don't know. I mean, I've got any content to make, you know? <laughs> so in the summer, my ideal self would wear box braids. And then in the winter, I would wear box braids again, maybe. But it doesn't have to be box braids. It can be cane rolls, like, you know, four cane rolls going back or two cane rolls going back. Just as long as you're tucking your ends in and protecting your ends. Sometimes your hair just actually needs that break as well. Because as you can imagine, like if you wear wash and goes all the time, you're going to experience some sort of breakage somewhere or you're going to experience an issue of some sort because you're over wearing the same style over and over again. That's actually another side tip is to not wear the same hairstyle over and over again because you're going to actually cause stress on certain areas. So say for instance, if you wear your hair up in a bun all the time, you're going to experience breakage at the back of your hair. If you wear your hair in two braids all the time, you're going to experience breakage all the way down the middle of your head or even the sides of your head. You know what I mean? The reason why I say to protect your hair in summer is one, because of the sun, the UV rays can actually damage your hair. Two, it's humid anyway and your hairstyles are not going to last as long. So you might as well just tuck your hair away or put your hair away and wear something that's actually going to last in the heat like box sprays or goddess sprays or whatever you're into you know and also if your hair is frizzing up in the humid weather and all of that it's going to be prone to frizziness which is going to be prone to breakage so you want to prevent your hair from frizzing up which is my next point which is not to let your hair get too dry so when you style your hair on the weekend and it's midweek and your hair's getting mad dry don't even think about putting it up in a bun and just leaving it to wash day and i actually did this quite a lot but just i just put my hair up in a bun and just left it and it's dry matted state just wet it with water put it up in a bun and just leave it all dry and matted in my hair and my hair actually did get damaged i got high growth fatigue and breakage at the back of my hair i had really short nape hair so midweek when you feel like your hair is getting too dry Take your water and your leave-in conditioner, spray it down. As I said, use your oils to seal the ends and tuck them away. When I re-moisturize my hair, I like to use a moisturizer. At the moment, I'm using the Cantu Curl Activator, which is really, really moisturizing for my hair. So I've got it, add the moisturizer and restyle it, whether I'm doing braids or even a bun, for instance. So if I'm wearing my hair up in a bun, I would put it up in a bun and then wear it for the day when I get home though, I will take my hair down and allow it to actually dry. Because if you're wetting your hair and applying moisture and putting it up in a bun, the inside is still gonna be wet. So you wanna allow that hair to dry inside because you can get high growth fatigue. And that's exactly how I got it, so. I can't remember if I covered it in my last tip about the oils. But my next tip is to use oils in your weekly regime. As I said, if you don't like to use oils, I still think oils have a place in anybody's regime. Whether it's a pre-poo, like a hot oil treatment or something, deep conditioning or midweek styling, oils have their place, trust me. And if you do have a really good oil that helps with hair growth, even better. I've tried out a lot of oils throughout my natural hair journey and I know what oils work really well on my hair. So with my oil mixture, I've just taken all of those oils and put it into one jar with some essential oils and that's all I do but the oils I definitely will recommend is avocado, castor oil, olive oil, grapeseed oil, jojoba oil and then essential oils would be peppermint, lavender, 
rosemary but also what you gotta realize about oils some of them are sealants and some of them are penetrative so the penetrative oils i use like to use on my scalp and depending on what i'm doing i apply it to my strands as well but most of the time i'm using sealant oils on my strands my next tip is to protect your hair whether it's your satin pillowcases, your satin scrunchies, your satin hair scarf, you want to make sure that you're protecting your hair at night. Even when you're chilling at home, you want to make sure that you're not rubbing your hair up on your pillows. As you know, cotton does dry out our hair and I've experienced this so many times and even even recently I've fell off my regime and stopped wearing my hair scarf at night just because I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> if you're not going to wear a hair scarf, at least have your satin pillowcases there. I normally like to wear my hair scarf and have my sat satin pillowcase as a backup as well if my hair scarf falls off at night. So my hair should be always protected. As for the scrunchies, I don't like to go to bed with my hair in a hair tie. I always like to put my satin scrunchies in my hair just because you know as you're moving around it can pull on the hair tie and then break off and then you realize that you've got short nape hair or short side hair so make sure you're taking down that bun or taking down whatever hair so you have so you don't cause strain on your hair and make it fall out i personally like to put my hair up in a pineapple and wrap it when i'm wearing my wash and goals or my twist outs or my braid outs not only does it protect your hair it does preserve the hairstyle as well even if you're wearing your hair straight you still need to wrap your hair not only to preserve the straightness but also to protect your hair so yes protect your hair protect your edges protect your nape protect everything okay also with the oils i don't like to use coconut oil in my hair when i'm styling i do add coconut oil to my mixed jar just like with all the oils in it it's only like a, a tablespoon or two so i don't get that dryness that i get with coconut oil usually but with the coconut oil i did used to use it with my pre shampoo routine so when it was getting washed out it was fine because <laughs> coconut oil has a lot of benefits right but a lot of people like myself complain about dryness with coconut oil so that's the way i get around with coconut oil is to use it as a pre-shampoo and make sure that i'm washing it out of my hair still get the benefits but not staying in my hair my next tip is to pre-poo your hair whether it's conditioning right before you wash it or whether you pre poo it the night before or whatever you like to do. I like to make sure that I do my pre poo routine before I wash my hair simply because I want to detangle my hair before I go ahead and shampoo. Because when you shampoo, it's gonna mess up your hair even more. So you don't really wanna shampoo your hair on knotted hair because it's gonna make it even more knotty and hard to detangle. So I would recommend to add pre poo routine into your routines. So as I said, my main aim for my pre poo routine is to detangle my hair before I shampoo. The pre-poo that I like to use is the African Pride pre-shampoo. Everybody likes this product. I have not heard anybody say a bad word about this product. It gives you tons of slip, easy detangling, and I'm telling you like, easy detangling. I haven't actually tried my Tangle Teaser with the pre-shampoo yet, but I know it's gonna be a breeze when I use both of those together. So if you do have a problem with detangling your hair, I definitely do recommend that product. I've seen a lot of people with different hair textures using this product as well and loving it, loving the results. And an add-on tip to this is to only detangle your hair when it's wet. So in my pre poo routines, I like to saturate my hair with water and conditioner or my pre-shampoo, but I like to make sure that it's wet. So when I'm brushing my hair, it's gliding and not, you know, snagging, causing friction, all this stuff. I can't remember the last time I brushed my hair when it was dry. Probably only when my hair's straight, I would brush it when it's dry. But when my hair's curly, there's no way in hell you will see me brushing my hair when it's dry. I, no, I, I, <laughs> I can't even imagine it now. It's something that I used to do back in the day before I knew better, but I can't even imagine myself doing that. Mm -mm. And with the detangling, you want to make sure that you're being gentle and being patient with your hair. My hair did used to be a lot more thick than it is now. I've had a lot of postpartum hair fall. So my hair's like in the process of getting back thick. So my hair is actually all right to detangle. It doesn't cause me too much grief. But before, my hair used to get really, really tangled and it used to be quite troublesome because it was just so much hair. So I, I really had to dig deep and be patient and just try and get through those knots as gently as possible so yeah as you know start from the ends to the roots don't go from the top and find a detangling tool that works for you as well for a lot of my journey i did use a wire tooth comb and that was fine but i would find that i would snag a lot when i get to the roots so i've tried 
the easy detangler brush and now I have the tangle teaser which is the best brush I'll say that I've tried so far so find the right tools that's going to help you with detangling my son has really thick dense hair the easy detangler brush works well on his hair my my younger son he has really fine hair and I've got a tangle I've got a Denman tangle brush for him and that works really well on his hair but I can't use a tangle teaser on my son's fine hair because I find that it snags too much and then for my older son's hair I find the tangle teaser is a little bit too shallow for his hair like it won't go deep into his hair so you got to find the right tools that work well for your hair so that's all the tips I have for you guys and as with anything it takes time patience and dedication to see results and if you fail to prepare you prepare to fail so make sure you have all the right tools and all the right products and all the right knowledge even to um start your natural hair journey if you're starting it or if you're on it at the moment if you are looking for more knowledge you can check websites you can watch other people's youtube videos with watching youtube videos i would say to watch people who have your hair type or your hair density or even like whether your hair is fine or thick my strands alone they're medium they're not actually thick so with that being said some products might work differently for my hair compared to others with the density as well if you have really thick hair you want to take reviews from someone who's got that thick voluminous hair the reason why i say that is because someone with fine hair or someone with a looser texture sometimes they can just use leave-in conditioner or it could be any leave-in conditioner or any product at all and still get good result but with me with my hair i know that not every product works well with my hair some of them is going to be a bit too light for my hair i prefer to have thick products with lots of <laughs> heavy butters and oils whereas someone might not want to have heavy butter or oils in their hair because it's going to wear their hair down so yeah, when you're watching YouTube, just make sure you're looking at their hair to see if it matches your hair type or your hair density or your hair's porosity. So yes, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from myself. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.